Your attention, masters, mistresses, all systems functional for the Everything Geek podcast. Hey, this is Rich McDonald, and I play Commander David Mason on Call of Duty Black Ops 2. You're listening to Everything Geek podcast. Hey, it's James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Master Pro Cool in Star Wars The Clone Wars, and you're listening to Everything Geek. The podcast. Hey, it's Leif Gamfert. I played Uncle Ben's killer in The Amazing Spider-Man, and you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, I'm Simon Fisherbecker. You probably know me better as Dorian Moldovar from Doctor Who, or the Fat Friar from Harry Potter. And this is Everything Geek Podcast. Face it, Tiger. You just hit the jackpot with the Everything Geek Podcast. You're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast, bringing you interviews from your favorite films and TV shows every week, and all of the latest news. Here's your host, Rory Williamson. Hello everyone, this is Rory Williamson of the Everything Geek Podcast, presenting my interview from London Film and Comic Con with actor Pip Torrens, best known for playing Colonel Kaplan in Star Wars The Force Awakens, Rogue Castle in Doctor Who, HMS Bedford Captain in the James Bond film Tomorrow Never Dies, Sir Kenneth Clark in My Week with Marilyn, Netherfield Butler in Pride and Prejudice, Dr. Hexler in The Danish Girl, Major Tompkins in War Horse, Ian Gilmore in The Iron Lady, Howard Carter in The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, and the voice of Lofty and Valiant in Joy. Hello everyone, this is Rory Williamson of the Everything Geek Podcast. I'm here at London Film and Comic Con with actor Pip Torrance. How are you today, sir? I'm very well, how are you? Very good, thanks. It's been a very interesting day. Are you enjoying the event so far? I've enjoyed it hugely. It's been my first Comic Con and, and um, I've absolutely loved it. Met so many interesting people and seen lots of other interesting and diverse performers and actors as well. So it's been, it's been continuously interesting. And you've mentioned there's your first one. Has anything about it surprised you, like the sheer size of it or anything stand out? Yeah, the size certainly, but also just the fact that people are so friendly and nice and, and they're pleased that you've come and, and that, you know, you want to share stories with them about, you know, the productions you've been in and, and just to see the loyalty that certainly, you know, some brands like Star Wars and, and Doctor Who and things attract. It's really great. It's really, you know, encouraging. That's great. Now, for some of our listeners who may not be familiar with your background, can you tell us how you got into acting and decided to become an actor? I'd always wanted to act, and I was always in kind of plays at school. I was at boarding school as a kid, and I'd always be volunteering for the school plays and stuff like that. And then I did a lot of acting at university, and then I went to a sort of crash course drama school for a year in London. And then I had my luckiest ever break, which was I got into a play in the West End of London about schoolboys in the 1930s and um, sort of like the history boys but long before the history boys and uh, I got in on that as an understudy and uh, I was understudy to an unknown actor called Daniel Day-Lewis and then I um, just sort of stuck with that show and just got into sort of smaller parts in television over the years and just kept pegging away that's it just kept trying to be in as much as I could be in all the time. Very nice. Now, you've had a long acting career even prior to your role in the recent Star Wars film, The Force Awakens. You've had over 100 credits to your name even before playing Colonel Kaplan. What is it that made Star Wars stand out to you and want to be part of The Force Awakens? Just the fact that it is Star Wars. I mean, I think everyone I spoke to, even at the auditions, um, was saying, this is so exciting. We, you know, we, we were going to audition for for Star Wars originally and we, we barely knew that it was Star Wars we were auditioning with scenes that had been written just for the audition they bore no resemblance to the final script and indeed I think none of us in the smaller parts knew the lines we were going to have until we got there on the set and there was a, a huge atmosphere of secrecy about the whole production so when we left the trailers we had to wear black sort of cassocks just to go from the trailer to the catering tent and things like that so great air of secrecy and great area of air of, of importance attached to the whole thing. It was just very, very exciting to be in it. And, you know, I, I remember the original 
films very well as a kid, and I just loved it. So just really thrilling. I think everyone feels that thrill. It's really interesting what you were saying about the secrecy because obviously all of our followers know that all of the main cast members are disguised when they go into record scenes, but it's really interesting that you were also in disguise along with other small parts actors. Very interesting. Mm. Now, while everyone has to be very serious on the set of a film or TV show, there are obviously very funny moments that happen, like someone messing up a line, for example, during the production. Can you remember any funny moments on any project you worked on that stands out in your mind? I suppose the one that stands out for me is years ago I did a Channel 4 production called Shackleton about Ernest Shackleton, the explorer who went to the South Pole and famously was stuck there for two years but managed to get himself and all his entire crew back to safety uh, from uh, between 1914 and 1916 and, and they had an incredible journey. We went and filmed that in... Um, the pack ice off the coast of Greenland and this incredible uh, journey there and it's involved a lot of work with sledges and with dogs and these are husky dogs that are not pets and they're very very tough almost like wild beasts and there'll be several occasions where we were trying to control these dogs and if two if you've got two dogs and they were going to go in separate directions you're going to get pulled over because uh, I tell you I'm quite happy never to work with children and animals again no i'm happy to work with children again but i never want to work with a, a greenland husky again i can tell you that they're absolutely terrifying wild beasts anyway that's really amusing so my final question for you pip do you have any upcoming acting roles or anything else coming up that you want to talk about um well the thing i'm most excited about which i've been talking to people about today when they've asked is uh, a series called the crown which is starting on netflix in uh, november and that's about the current queen, Queen Elizabeth II, starting out as a very young woman and inheriting the throne before she'd expected to and being given a lot of advice by older um, civil servants and, and uh, court people and, and, and royal household people as to what she should do. And very often that meant acting against her, her own personal inclination and, and doing the right thing. It was a very hard lesson for her, and I think people will see the queen that most of us know as an old lady in a, in a very different light and appreciate her even more um, in, in that she, she was a young girl really who had this enormous responsibility thrust upon her and, and has lived the most extraordinary life herself through just doing what, what she perceived to be the right thing and putting, putting her duty first which is, is, is an extraordinary thing and she's a throwback to a completely different era and I think people will be very interested to see the beginnings of, of that now that she's coming to the end of her end of her life really and uh, it's a terrific show it's written by peter morgan who wrote the queen and the audience and i i think people are going to really like it maybe the queen will watch it herself <laughs> well, i wouldn't be surprised or she'll she'll have one of her friends watch it and tell her about it yeah definitely would be very interesting thanks so much for talking to us today very nice to talk to you thank you make sure to check out our podcast links Check out our website, website.everythinggeekpodcast.com slash EGP. Check out our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash everythinggeekpodcast. Check out our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash user slash everythinggeekcast. Check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash everythinggeekp. Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash official everything geek podcast. Check out our Mixcloud profile, www.mixcloud.com slash everything geek podcast. Email us at the following email, everything geek podcast at gmail.com. Check out our companion podcast, everything geek comic cast www.facebook.com slash everythinggeekcomiccast Make sure to check out the host's YouTube channels. Mine is www.youtube.com slash user slash destroyers. Check out Pip Torrens's full list of credits on IMDb www.imdb.com slash name slash nm086 Eight four seven six, and check out channel 1138 where we broadcast live from www.channel1138.com Geeks out everyone
definitely uh, going to try and push on and pursue it more. Absolutely, and you definitely should. So moving on to my second question, Neil, how were you initially cast in Star Wars The Force Awakens? Um, uh, I'm not quite sure. A, a, a vein sort of streak in my personal uh, makeup, I suppose. I, I thought in those days I wanted to be a, a model, and I was hoping to use it as a backdoor to, to acting, and that, but it didn't. Um, but I...